If you spend any amount of time on social media, you probably heard the term digital minimalism. The proponents of digital minimalism argue that reducing your exposure to social media, digital content and technology in general can drastically improve your mental health, give you back the ability to focus and concentrate on daily tasks, and make it easier for you to have genuine, real-life interactions with humans around you. On paper, this is hard to argue with. The modern social media is very harmful and addictive, and that's not by accident. Social media companies like Meta and TikTok put a lot of money, research and effort into making their products more and more addictive, practically rewiring our brains and making us want to spend more and more time on their platforms, which, in turn, earns more money for them. It's also hard to overstate the influence social media has had on the political climate in the world. Some platforms like Facebook and Twitter use algorithms to put their users into echo chambers, while others like YouTube and TikTok will use their recommendation algorithms to radicalize their users by exposing them to more and more extreme political content. And don't even get me started on the privacy aspect of the whole thing. That's probably worth an entirely new video on its own. Now, smartphones are a perfect conduit for a social media addiction. We carry them everywhere, which makes getting our TikTok or Instagram fix terrifyingly fast and simple. If social media is the heroin, then a smartphone is a syringe. If social media is the crack, then a smartphone is like a crack pipe. If social media is cocaine, you get the idea. <laughs> so obviously then, the solution is to get rid of your smartphone and replace it with one of these. This is a feature phone, or a dumb phone, as some people call them nowadays. It obviously doesn't have TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or any of these terrible and harmful social media apps. So that makes it the perfect cure for the social media addiction, right? Well, a lot of lifestyle influencers certainly seem to think that way. In the past few years, we've seen an explosion of the dumb phone content. What I've learned living with my dumb phone for two years. Why I used a dumb phone in 2021. And even the anti-smartphone revolution. Actually, as I was writing the script for this video, Chris Titus Tech uploaded a video about his experience replacing a smartphone with a dumb phone. And for the record, I think he makes a lot of good points in his video. However, I've always been skeptical of the kind of minimalism that has buying a minimal thing as its core concept. And this is not an exception. There are a lot of companies that decided to capitalize on the dumb phone hype and started selling cool, hip and minimal phones of their own, with marketing that focuses on digital well-being and social media addiction. Why buy a fully functional smartphone for 350 bucks if for the same price you can get this stylish, minimal and hip feature phone, which doesn't come with a charger, for environmental reasons of course, but does come with chic marketing and a summer reading recommendation. Seriously, they couldn't have been more pretentious if they tried. <laughs> or how about this light phone too? For a slightly lower price of 299 you get a snazzy plastic brick with an e-ink screen, which will definitely cure your smartphone addiction, because it makes even such simple tasks as calling and texting so frustrating that you wouldn't want to use it very often. <laughs> But hey, if that's the way you want to go, you can just get a cheap off-brand Android phone for like about 80 bucks. You just need to make sure that you get something with terrible performance, a crappy Android reskin and maybe Chinese ads and lock screen. And the experience will probably be almost as frustrating. <laughs> now, of course, I'm being facetious and kind of picking the low-hanging fruit. There are plenty of old dumb phones that aren't made for pretentious hipsters, which you can buy or even get for free. However, the problem with these is that most of those old feature phones only support 2G radio, which is currently being phased out all around the world due to security concerns. So chances are, you won't even be able to use your dumb phone for calling and texting. Well, what about modern dumb phones from companies like Nokia? This Nokia 6300 4G costs 65 euros, supports 4G connectivity, and comes with apps such as YouTube, Facebook, Reddit, VK, and WhatsApp. It seems that modern dumb phones are currently undergoing the same process that they did basically 15 years ago, and we might eventually see feature phones with touchscreens, with no keyboard, and who knows, maybe they'll eventually put Android on them. Personally, I think that the dumb phone solution treats the wrong problem. In the best oversimplified boomeresque phone bad fashion, the dumb phone trend completely misses the actual problem, social media, and instead treats its symptom, a smartphone. This might surprise you, but once you look past the social media apps, smartphones can actually be pretty useful. Here are just a few examples. Secure payments, public transport tickets, checking into flights, listening to music and podcasts on the go, reading books, learning a foreign language, navigation, taking cute pictures of your pets and kids, and surprise, surprise, communicating with your friends and family. 
Can you do all of those things without a smartphone? Sure, but it's just gonna be much, much less convenient. Replacing your smartphone with a dumb phone is throwing a baby out with the bathwater. It might be a very appealing, radical and motivating solution at a first glance, but radical solutions are not sustainable and will not stick in the long run. They do, however, sound very cool and make for very nice inspirational stories, such as how not using a smartphone for a month changed my life, or I stopped using my iPhone for a week and now I never go back and so on. There's a reason why fad diets and fitness challenges are more popular than just eating healthier and trying to be more active. There's definitely something appealing with radical solutions that promise to turn your life around. But people rarely stick with radical changes. What people do tend to stick with are little incremental changes that you can incorporate into your life without some kind of an enormous stoic effort and can commit to regularly. Well, believe it or not, you don't need to actually buy a dumb phone to get your digital life in order. Your smartphone doesn't have to be your enemy, and with just a few tools that are probably already built into your smartphone, you can turn it from a serotonin slot machine into what smartphones were always supposed to be, a personal digital assistant. And if that's not enough, there's always the nuclear option. You can turn any modern smartphone into a dumb phone at no additional cost, because surprise, surprise, even when it comes to just texting and calling, smartphones are way more convenient than dumb phones. Multilingual predictive input, robocall detection, voice messages, location sharing and instant translations. All of those things that we've learned to take for granted are immense quality of life improvements that don't waste your time or demand extra attention. And they're obviously missing on dumb phones. I have three large battery power banks that I oh, shoot, sorry, didn't see you here. One sec, just gonna finish watching that TikTok, it's really funny. <laughs> Let's start with the first and the least radical option. One thing that you could use is a tool called Digital Wellbeing on Android or Screen Time on iOS. Those two functions basically do the same thing and that is helping you limit your time in certain apps. You can easily limit the time you spend on, let's say, Twitter to five minutes a day and once you're over that limit, your phone will request a password to remove the limits. And if you really don't trust yourself, you can always give the password to a friend or relative. Another useful function that is present on at least iOS is called Focus. There should be something similar on Android, but unfortunately I don't have an Android smartphone on hand to confirm or deny it. Focus lets you define custom rules for notifications and home screen, so what I usually do is I have a work focus which hides the page with my entertainment apps and only allows notifications from work apps, phone and SMS. You can also configure a wind down mode in which your phone stops showing you notifications in the evening and lets you, well, wind down before you go to sleep. There's been a lot of research into how using a smartphone in bed interferes with the natural sleep behavior and production of melatonin. And even if you use a night light or a similar feature that basically makes your screen more yellow, you're still overstimulating your brain with social media content, which makes you spend more time on your phone and go to bed later. One more thing that personally helps me is not putting my phone on my bedside table when I go to sleep. That way you don't fall asleep scrolling on your phone and you don't wake up reaching for it again. If you need an alarm clock, you can buy one of those analog ones for as little as six bucks. And if you have a smartwatch or a fitness bracelet, you can always use an alarm function on that. Notifications are complicated. When people try to reduce the amount of distractions on their smartphones, they tend to go cold turkey and disable all notifications altogether. No notifications, no distractions, right? But what ends up happening instead is that the FOMO kicks in and you end up checking your phone all the time to see if there's anything new, which really defeats the point, doesn't it? However, we also can't leave the notifications as they are because every gosh darn app on your phone wants your attention. And if you look at the notification bar of a typical Android user, you'll probably see something like this. Each one of those icons doesn't just take up the space on your screen, it takes up space in your brain. So we need to fix that. Start by disabling all automated or scripted notifications that don't represent a human interaction. Stuff like, check out what's new on Reddit, or hey, we miss you on TikTok, or don't lose your Duolingo streak, or whatever. For that, you're gonna want to go into every social media or messaging app and tweak notifications there. Feel free to disable notifications like reposts, like, retweets, new followers, and stuff like that. That's not something that you really need to be notified of. The rest of your notifications should fall into three categories. Regular, visual only, and silenced. The regular notifications should only be reserved for time-sensitive things or human-to-human -human interactions that require your immediate attention. So work, close friends, and family. 
Those notifications have the most impact on your focus since they play a sound and light up your phone's screen, immediately grabbing your attention and taking you out of whatever it is you're doing at the moment. So they should only be reserved for very important and urgent messages. Going one level lower and we have visual only notifications. Those are the ones that light up your screen but don't make a sound. But make no mistake, they are still pretty powerful and can be a distraction, especially if you have your phone right in front of you. The notifications I usually put into this category are group chat mentions, non-work emails, delivery notifications, and basically all kinds of interactions that don't necessarily need my immediate attention. The last category of notifications, silenced, are the notifications that don't grab your attention in any way, but will still show up on your screen if you check it. Feel free to include social media mentions here and maybe that one friend that keeps bombarding you with memes. Trust me, you don't need to get a notification every time your friend sends you a new Amogus Breaking Bad edit. Or do you? Once you set up the time limits, configure focus, and dial in the notifications, your phone should already go from a distraction to a tool that only requires your attention for a good reason. But if that's not enough, there's always the nuclear option. That is, turning your smartphone into a dumb phone with GPS and a good camera. If you have absolutely zero impulse control and know for a fact that half measures won't be enough, this is the way to go. The following tweaks are going to make your smartphone as boring and as close to a dumb phone in terms of entertainment value as possible. Start by removing the social media apps. WhatsApp, Signal, and other apps that only do messages should be fine, but you might want to mute the group chats, and if you're using Telegram, unsub from all the channels. Next, make your phone screen black and white. No, I'm not joking. Now, a human brain might be the pinnacle of evolution, but deep inside we're still monkeys that like shiny and colorful stuff. And one of those things that make us go back to our phones are those colorful icons and red notification bubbles. This might sound stupid, but setting your phone to black and white immediately makes it like 90% less addictive. And trust me, once you do that, you will notice that you don't want to check it as much. You can find the black and white feature in your phone's accessibility settings, and it's usually something that you would do if you're colorblind or have you know, issues distinguishing colors. Obviously, if you use your phone for navigation in a car or take a lot of pictures, this might not be the best advice, but if you don't, definitely consider it. Another thing that I like to do is setting my phone wallpaper to white. Black might be more aesthetically pleasing, especially if your phone has OLED, but it also makes content like notifications and icons pop a bit more. Setting your phone to light theme and choosing a boring single color wallpaper helps. Last thing to do is remove everything from your home screen. Your home screen should only have the essential apps. Phone, a few messaging apps, calendar, and maybe maps and a music app. Not like you have any other apps that would distract you at this point, but unlocking your phone and seeing this should give a clear signal to your brain that there is nothing interesting going on here. So there you have it. Now once again, this is quite a radical approach, but it just goes to show that if you want to, you can turn your smartphone into a dumb phone, but it does not work the other way around. That's gonna be it for this video, and as usual, I would like to thank my patrons. James Uppington, Mitchell Valentino, Carlos Benilla, David Love, Catherine DC, Primus, Remus Ilyash, Robot Stream of Crypto, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.